couples who plan to marry and start a family can be anxious and doubtful. Sometimes couples have the pre-wedding fear of what life will be like. Then children join the family, and the couple's life changes forever. Just imagine how Joseph and Mary must have felt. They were engaged to be married, and Mary found herself expecting a child. Joseph had to be scared. Imagine, the woman he is to marry is with a child that is not his. What will people think? He didn't want to expose Mary to public disgrace, so he wanted to end the engagement quietly. But how do you think Mary felt at this time? She was very young and probably scared. She visited her cousin Elizabeth, who was six months with child. The angel Gabriel had visited Zacharias with the message that his wife Elizabeth would be with child. Even though she was barren and advanced in age, she would have a child who would be filled with the Holy Spirit, even in his mother's womb. Gabriel gave God's message that the child would be named John, and he would turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. Now Mary would soon be with child, and she had never even been with a man. And now she is going to give birth to the only religious leader who was the fulfillment of prophecies. As a young couple, with a special child on the way, they will experience many anxieties and fears, but they will also wonder in the amazement and joy this baby will bring them.
will protect and raise this little one. We will share our feelings, fears, and expectations with God. God eats Joseph's fears through a dream. The Lord appeared to him through the angel Gabriel and told him not to be afraid that Mary, his wife, was carrying the Holy Spirit. She will have a son, and he will be called Emmanuel, and he will save his people from their sins. His name will mean God with us. Mary, too, was visited by the angel Gabriel, and he told her not to be afraid, and that she had found favor with God. And behold, you will bring forth a son and call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom. There will be no end. Joseph and Mary had their immediate worries, but the people of the ancient world had to deal with cruel tyrants. Leaders of this time usually rose to power through family connections. Even though King Herod had Jewish temples built, he also built temples for other religions as well. This caused the Jews to question his authenticity and his intentions as a converted Jew. King Herod was an evil leader, ready to commit crimes to satisfy his aspirations. He taxed the people and spent outstanding amounts of money on his whims. He impoverished the people of Judea.
Since Joseph was from the lineage of David, it was required that he travel with his betrothed wife from Galilee, out of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, to register for the census. It would be in Bethlehem that Mary would deliver her firstborn son. Mary would swaddle him in cloths. Since there was no room at the inn, Mary and Joseph brought this precious treasure into the world and placed him in a manger, a wooden or stone feeding trough that would have been in a stable or even a cave. These troughs were for placing hay for large animals, like cattle, horses, and donkeys to feed. Mangers were well stocked with hay for animals to snack on at their leisure, so the hay would make a quick makeshift crib for their son. Mary needed a safe place for the baby, and the trough would be off the cold floor and more protected. There were large animals around the Christ child and his parents. As the animals go to the manger for food, so can we go to Jesus for spiritual nourishment.
have been amazed. Suddenly, the shepherds looked at each other and said, Let's go to Bethlehem. They wanted to see the things which God had told them about. They hurried toward the star in Bethlehem and found the young couple with their blessed treasure swaddled and lying in a manger. After seeing the baby, they spread the word to everyone they saw. They told people about the Christ child, and people were amazed at what the shepherds said. Mary sat, treasuring everything said and pondering it in her heart. She sat quietly, reflecting on this blessing lying in the manger. Her heart was filling with so much love for this child and Savior. The shepherds returned to the fields outside of Bethlehem to tend their flocks. They glorified and praised God because everything they found in Bethlehem was just as the angel said it would be. It was the average working people who were notified of this great news first, not the influential politicians, priests, or leaders. In God's kingdom, the peasants are prophets, and Jesus will teach. Indeed, there are those who are last who will be first, and first who will be last. Yeah. 
and teachers of the law. What do they know? I am the law. A prophecy of a shepherd as a ruler. How can that be? No one tells me what to do, not even the king. As you 
your salvation. I see salvation in your Son. You have repaired it in the presence of the world. You have given a light of revelation, a light for God had warned them in a dream not to return, 
So they traveled secretly a different way home. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying to flee Egypt with the child and his mother. Stay there until I tell you to return. Herod is going to try and kill the child. Joseph gathered up Jesus and Mary that night and fled to Egypt. They stayed there until they heard of the death of Herod. When Joseph, Mary, and Jesus returned from Egypt, this fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through the prophet. I call my son out of Egypt. Spread. 